Is it time to fire a client or break up with a client? And how do you do it? I know how anxiety inducing this is, and I know how much stress this can cause. So I'm so excited for you to be here with me at Business Breakfast in Bedhead because we're going to get into it this morning, how to break up with a client in a way that is compassionate, kind, empathetic, and that leaves you feeling good and proud of how you dealt with the situation. So good morning. As you're popping in, I'm going to get into a quick story here about this. But as you do, I want you to say hello and good morning. Put your name where you're tuning in from in the chat so I can say hello with you to you. Because here's the thing is I don't want Want these to be me just talking on a screen at you. I want to be talking with you this morning. So go ahead and say hello in the chat. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to get into this. So real life story here about a time I had to fire a client. It's so hard. Breaking up with clients is really, really hard because you got into this industry because you care about the people you work with. You care about the people that you connect with and you would do it probably for free if you could, if money wasn't something that we needed. But yet we get to these places where we feel worn out. We feel burnt out. We feel frustrated. And so I want to tell you about a time that I was about 20 2016, I was 16 years into my career and I had really struggled with boundaries. I had moved my entire life to a brand new city starting over. And I was like, I'm so excited to be in a new city, in a bigger city where people are going to respect me more. I had this thing in my head that people were going to respect me more and they were going to trust me more because a bigger city was going to be full of more respectful people. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello from Virginia. Hello from Colorado. I love it. Okay. So as you guys are saying hello and putting your name in the chat, let me finish this story really quick. So 2016, uh, 2014, I had moved. I was like, I'm going to move to a bigger city. I'm going to get so much more respected. People are going to trust me here more. And I found myself, I had picked up, packed up, moved away. And I have so many people be like, well, just the easiest thing to be just start over. And I'm like, I mean, it's, it's, you get rid of clients in one way, but you, your shit follows you around. So there I am two years into a new city, struggling with the same thing, people not respecting my time, people walking all over me. And yet I kept caving in and I call it the squeaky wheel of our industry is that we end to reward, we, we end up rewarding bad behavior. Any of you guys relate to what I'm talking about? Good morning from Missouri. Hi, Amanda. Hello from Maine. Hi from San Diego. I love it. Hi, Diana. And so if you guys have ever felt like, why do these same things keep happening over and over? Why does everyone disrespect me? And you kind of start to realize that aha moment that like I'm the common denominator. I got to this point and I was not enforcing my policies. I was not following through. I had my clients agree. And I remember over and over and over with this one client, I'd be like, Hey, just so you know, like, we can't get you there in one appointment. It's going to take two appointments. And she'd always go, yeah, I know. And then every time I would do her hair, she'd be like, it's just not light enough. And I'd be like, but remember, I told you we can't get you there in one appointment. She's like, I know. And then I would always never follow through. And I got to a point where I was so frustrated and she would always agree. And I'm not, I preface this and disclaimer, I'm not saying anything negative about my client. I want you guys to know that. And I want to really equip you guys to when you hear things and understand things to start getting curious about what is the perspective and where is this coming from? Because I've gotten a lot of trolls on some recent um, reels that I've done, you know, stating that like I'm shit talking clients. I am sharing my experience. Hi, Macovers YYC morning from Calgary. I have gotten a lot of trolls and people saying that, uh, and even people within the industry saying I'm shaming clients. I want you guys to know that my intent is never to shame clients. My intent is to validate our emotions and things, regardless of the intent that the client had. And so I share a lot of experiences and stories from my past, and I, um, to share with you guys the feelings and emotions I was going through and that they're valid, but that we don't need to act on them and we don't need to push the responsibility to our client. Okay. So about firing a client. So it was 2016 and I had been trying to, and I've been trying to, I'd been getting really good at communicating my policies, but I wasn't following through on them. And I felt like I just built up this rapport with this client where she knew that I would never follow through on my policies. And we got into this really bad habit this really bad habit of where like, I'd always be like, Hey, just so you know, and she'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I would never follow through. And it got to a point where I was like, I it's, I just need to part ways with this person, nothing about them. And that they, it wasn't that they continued to disrespect me. It's that I continued to allow it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know that's a hard one this morning. Good morning, Melanie from Wa Vancouver, Washington. I love it. And so I want to remind you guys that we cultivate a safe space and a judgment-free zone here together as well. If you guys can commit to this being a judgment-free zone, not only for me while I share this story, but for each of you, because we're all in different places, can you just put a yes in the comments? And if you're listening to this on the Anxious Creative Podcast, make sure you come on over to Instagram and join us live for one of these sometimes. We have so much fun. So I got to this breaking point where I was like, I don't know. It might be too late to set this up. Now, in hindsight, I look back and I could have tried to keep that client and go, hey, 
I, I got to apologize. I haven't been, I've been telling you about my policies. I've been telling you about this, but I haven't been following through on it. And I've created a habit for us. And I call this the unconscious dance we have with clients that we say, just so you know, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to pay, or just so you know, it's going to take two appointments or just so you know, if you late cancel again, just so you know, and then we do that and they start to realize, oh, but like when I late cancel, she never does anything. So like she says this, but doesn't follow through. And we turn it, we get into this unconscious dance of like, well, when I tell her that she's the only one that can do my hair, then I know oh, that was a weird, like, if you guys heard that, like sucked in a bunch of air. Um, it's, it's an unconscious manipulation and it's not, I really don't believe it's contrived on their part. It's that we don't follow through. And so through learned behavior, it's like a little kid, right? Like, Oh, if you don't stop doing this, we're packing up, we're getting out of the store and we're going home. But if the mom never actually, or the parent guardian never actually follows through on it, we learn as human beings. We learn not by what people say, we learn by what people do. So watch what people do and watch what you do rather than what you say. Oh, I know it's so hard. It's not the easiest thing. So I was in this unconscious dance with this client. I kept telling her, just so you know, it's going to take two appointments to get you to that light. It's going to always take two appointments when, hi, Tracy, I like your stories. It lets me know that I'm not, not alone. I'm so glad that you guys like the stories. And here's the thing. I've been in this industry, in the service industry for over two decades. It doesn't get easier. And miscommunications happen on whatever level that you're on. I don't want you guys to think that there's never a miscommunication that does that happens in my business now. They happen now still. And so me and this client were in this unconscious dance, I call it, where I'd always say, just so you know, I'm not going to be, it's, we're going to take two appointments. We're not going to get you to where you want today unless you want to come in more frequently. She'd say, yeah, I understand. Okay. Yep. 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 And then, you know, she'd, she'd call me a couple weeks later. It's just not that light. And I'd be like, remember, we can't get you that light. And she's like, yeah, but I just don't really like, and then I'd be like, oh, the thought of someone not being happy with me made me just go, well, just come in and I'll give you a few more highlights. So we were in this unconscious dance and I decided it was time to, I needed to make a shift and I needed to clean house. So it was less about my clients and more about how I needed to maneuver it. Could I have kept her on? Absolutely. Like I said, I had the choice. I could have been like, Hey, I got to apologize. I keep telling you that I can, it's going to take two appointments and you're going to have to pay for them. But then I never follow through on it. And moving on from today, I'm going to need to do that. There was one choice. I didn't choose that at the time. I remember sitting on my couch, not the couch that you guys see behind me here, sitting on my couch in the moment. I was actually creating my program, Rock Your Business, which if you guys are interested in, let me know. We can get you on the wait list. I believe if you just go to donbradley.com slash wait list, you can go get on the wait list. We're going to be opening up the enrollment for it soon. Um, but I was actually making rock your business and this text came in and it was this whole situation. And anyway, I remember being like, okay, if I'm going to teach other people this stuff, I need to model it. And so I decided in that moment that I no longer wanted to work with this client because I needed to create a new habit. And sometimes it's hard to create new habits with people who have been in your world for a while. So I, like I said, I had two choices. There's always two choices. We always have options. I could have tried to reframe it and follow through, but I knew that I was really struggling with that. So I decided it was time to break up with this client. And there was a little bit of friction going on because she had said that she would pay a fee and then retracted on it. And I knew that there was no way that I was going to be able to, you know, it's like when someone's like, you can't ever make someone pay a fee if you don't have their credit card on mm -hmm. file. And was, am I going to try and change it? So I just asked, what would you feel is fair in this situation? They reiter reiterated that they didn't, they didn't believe that they should pay me for the no-show that they had. And so I just, I really wanted, I wanted to write the email well so that I could walk away from it feeling proud. And maybe, you know, she might receive it and not feel good about it. But I wanted, if she went and showed that email to her friends, I wanted them to be like, well, it's actually like really well written. Yeah, it sucks that you, she like let you go as a client, but I didn't want there to be any passive aggressive in it. I didn't want there to be any sort of aggressive, assertive, um, I'm frustrated with you. You did this to me. I wanted to keep it all eyes and like, this is what's best and very factual, not I think, or I feel because that, that you can always create, um, what's the word I'm looking for. You can create with, with, I thinks and I feels there's the ability to debate. Well, I don't think that way. Well, I love that. So what I ended up saying is, Hey, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair. I really appreciate your support of my business over the years and how you've helped, helped you, you've, you've seen me over, over a, the couple of years of, as I've grown my business here in this new city. And I'll always appreciate that moving forward. This is where our professional relationship ends. I wish you all the best. And I look forward to seeing you out and about. I tried to make it very, very polite. Now at the end of the day, here's the thing I want you guys to learn. And something that I'm continuing to learn and grow with in my business and in my life right now is that I can put all the best intention in something. 
I can make it read so I hear it like, hey, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair. You know, thank you for your support of my business as it's grown over the years. I'll always appreciate that. Moving forward, this is where a professional relationship is going to end. I wish you all the best and I look forward to seeing, seeing you out and about. Wonderful. I cannot control how she receives it, perceives it, or, or, or decides to read it. And that's probably one of the hardest things is that we can put so much good intention into things, but they can still be pissed. They can still be upset because we each as people, have you guys ever gotten a text message from someone and been like, what the, and like, I can't believe. And then only to go back and read it a couple of days later when you're in a different headspace, when you're not stressed with other exterior things and you go, oh, there's actually a reel that I sent someone recently where this guy's like reading a text from a friend and he's like, Oh, he's like, I can't believe he's being so rude. And then you see the friend like writing it with like a totally different tone. And so one, I want you guys to equip the fact with like, when you are, when it's time to break up with a client, when it's time to have client communication, because we do so much of it through DM text and email, a lot of, um, lost in translation stuff can happen because we don't know the tone in which something's being said. Right. And there's a lot of us people pleasers that default onto passive aggressiveness. And sometimes we're not even aware of it. Like my default was to go to passive aggressive without even knowing I was going to passive aggressive because that way you can kind of be a little snarky and to the point. But if they call you on it, you can be like, Oh, I didn't know. That's not what I meant. Right? Like passive aggressive. And I, I I'm going to say this and I say this to myself, being passive aggressive is the most cowardly thing you can be because you're not willing to up, go out up front and say how you feel. You're trying to slide it in under the bar and hope they pick up on it. But if they call you on it, you can be like, oh no, I'm safe. It's the most cowardly thing. And yet a lot of us default to it because we don't know how to communicate. We have been ingrained to be kind, sweet and nice and accommodating, but yet we want to honor our own feelings, but we don't know how to honor our own feelings because that doesn't feel like it aligns with being kind, sweet and accommodating. So then we get to a breaking point. Hi, Naturally Unique Salon Inc. Um, I get to a breaking point and we don't know how to get it in there in a nice, kind, accommodating way. So then we slip it in there in really passive aggressive ways. Is anyone relating to this? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know I'm speaking to myself. A lot of times, like I have like epiphanies and ahas as I'm speaking to you guys with about this stuff. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, that's totally what it is. And I speak my truth very freely and very openly on these. And I and I thank you guys for the grace of the fact that I, I spit a lot of stuff out as it comes through my head. And I might not agree with some of my stuff later on. I'm processing things in real time with you guys as well. And so let me know if that connects where, you know, we've been taught to be kind, considerate, accommodating, always very polite. A lot of us people please have been brought up as like, you always are nice. You always, you know, you, you always, you don't make other people feel uncomfortable. And so when it comes to honoring our own emotions or when we get start to feel so frustrated, so angry, so, so whatever, we don't know how to even communicate that. And that's kind of one of my magic things is, is that I do is I help you guys learn how to communicate better and be able to say things that you need to say without it becoming an explosion. Now, here's the flip side to it. So we can't, you can do everything with the best intent, with the most um, intention that you ever can, but you can't control how they receive it. Just like when you get a message from a client, I get a lot of my students inside of Rocker Business um, will be like, hey, what do I do with this text? This person's saying this thing and I'll read it and I'll read it because I'm a third party and I'm not emotionally involved in it. I'll read it and I'll be like, hey, hey Mel, Hey, nail tech, good morning. And I'll read it as like a client's angry or, or no, I'll, sorry, I'll be the third party reading it and, and I'll be like, what's the issue? And a lot of times we feel obligated, right? Like a client will be like, Hey, I'm not sure about this piece of my hair. I want to let you like, I'm curious how I can like, like they're being really demanding. And then when I read it and I read it without the emotional attachment to it, I'm like, Oh, they're just asking a question. Right. And a lot of times we feel obligated by the questions or we read a message from a client and we assume negativity. Our brains work on negative biases. And so I want you guys to know that we need to start kind of pulling back. And like there's always other stuff in the room, right? Like you can get a message from a client and you've had four other clients late cancel on you or four other clients no show or four other clients like asking for a discount or whatever it is. And then by the time you get that one from that client, you're at your breaking point and you snap. 
right? And because, like I said, because we've been conditioned to be kind, considerate, and accommodating, we don't know how to express our emotions clearly and compassionately. So we end up getting to a breaking point or we end up being passive aggressive. And we end up so that if someone calls us on it, we can be like, I don't know what you're talking about. But at the end of the day, you can put the most intention into things. Your client is maybe legit just asking a question and you're assuming a negative response. A lot of the times, because we don't know how to stand up for ourselves, we actually show up defensively and we invite a combative response or we assume a combative response because we're scared it's going to be a negative interaction. And so I want you guys now, when you get messages from clients that you assume are them taking advantage of you or them being upset at you, I want you to try to go, how many different ways can I read this? I am what assumption am I making immediately? How am I reading this initially? Am I jumping to conclusions? Is there something, is there emotion in the room with me? Am I feeling frustrated, tired, or stressed out? And what if I read this with a happy tone? What if I read this with a curious tone? I, and I get it. I want you guys to know that every time I got to a point in 2016, before I ended up in the hospital with my stress induced panic attack, which I want none of you ever to get to because I was trying to accommodate and make everyone else happy except myself. I got to the point where when I would hear the text message ding on my phone, the stress response that would happen in my body, it was just immediate. And I was scared and I could open it up and it could be a client being like, Hey, Don, I got to tell you, like, I love my hair. And even though they were telling me yeah, how many different ways can we read this? Absolutely, Burgundy. At the end of the day, we can put the best intention out there, but it, the person reading it can receive it a totally different way, right? And so we have no control. And one of the things that I've had to do is like, I can't control, I'm not responsible for other people's emotions and I can't control how people choose to receive, perceive, or understand me. I need to be feel good about myself and, where, and the intention in which I put into things. And so- that stress response started to come every time I would just hear my phone ding, the stress would go through my body. And I was like, I can't handle this anymore because I got to the point where I didn't even associate a bad text message. I associated my phone dinging with a negative con connection. My body had conditioned myself because I had built, you know, I'm learning about like neural pathways and how we start to live in the past. And so, you know, a lot of times it's like, if you've had enough experiences with something, enough interactions, you start to assume every future interaction is that way. It's like when, you know, oh, this client's asking this question and a client in the past got mad at me about this sort of thing. So this client asking this question, they clearly must be mad at me. When a client, you know, I, I wish I had an example right here right now, but like someone saying, hey, I'm not sure about the tone. I feel like it might be too dark. I'm curious, what do you think? And this is just like a random one that I thought of, but I've had students be like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, am, what do I have to do? Give them a free toner? And I'm like, they're just asking, what do you think? Right. And we are, our stress response is to jump 10 steps ahead. We start to get, we get way ahead ourselves because we're anxious individuals and we assume the worst. What if you started assuming the best? I'm currently listening to the book Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. And he talks a lot about the neural pathways. And we build these neural pathways in our brains because of past experience. Maybe as a kid, you got in trouble a lot. Maybe as a kid, you weren't allowed to stand up for yourself. Maybe as a kid, you got misunderstood a lot. That's a lot of my story. And so now it's like I tend to go into things going, oh my gosh, they're going to misunderstand me. Oh my goodness. I'm the one that's the issue all the time. I'm the one. And so I'll assume fault before even anything happens, or I'll assume someone's coming and attacking me without getting curious of, oh, are they attacking me? Or am I reading this with the bias of assuming they're attacking me? And we do that a lot with our clients, especially those of us that care so deeply. I always get that pit in my stomach when a client messages me after appointment, then they tell me they love it. Yeah. And so Allie, I'm really, really passionate about these things because I never want you guys to go through the anxiety and the panic that I eventually got to. And that's why I talk a lot. And, and that's why my education is not going to be for everybody, right? Is that I teach you and, and those of you guys that have been around long enough know that I come at the approach of like, do what's going to be best for you because you can get all the checklists, you can get all the things and there's 10 different ways to do everything. But if it doesn't feel right for you, it's going to stress you out. You're going to hit a breaking point. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to want to think like throw it all up in the air and leave the industry. There's no one right way to do things. And you guys know, those of you guys that have been here long enough know that that's how I teach. Like you open Google Maps and you say, I want to go here. It's going to give you different options. You have to go, okay, which is the one that I want to go on? And maybe the way you'd go isn't the same way someone else would go. But you have to put yourself 
and your health first. Because I see so many people pushing themselves to the limit, trying to play catch up, trying doing the comparison game, thinking that they, you know, they're paralyzed by like there's this one I, I have to follow. So you know, the, the answers are external outside of me because who am I to be? good on my own. So I have to put responsibility on everyone else because if I take if I take responsibility, then I have to follow through on myself. But if I put the responsibility on everyone else, then I am scotch-free and I don't need to worry about it. And so we tend to put the blame. And I mean, I, I'm so sorry, you guys, but I've lived this with, over my two decades in industry. I used to blame my clients for things all the time, right? And that's why a lot of my content is a little tongue in cheek. I'll share this with you guys, because if I went out there and was like, you need to have better boundaries with your clients, that doesn't like hit the frustration that you're currently at currently right now. Well, a lot of you guys are kind of moving away, moving that because I'm taking you there. But the frustration at the time is my clients are taking advantage of me. And then I take you on this journey and recognize you teach people how to treat you. If you feel like something in someone or somebody or something that your clients are, Start to take a look at what responsibility. One of the one of my biggest things that I have ever learned is asking myself, what responsibility do I play in this? And it's a hard question because we don't want to have that look. What responsibility can I take in this situation? What can I own? Now, some of you guys are similar to me where you'll take too much responsibility for things too, right? Because you've been blamed a lot for things because a lot of other people who aren't aware, as self-aware as you will be like, no, it's you. And so you tend to like assume the villain, right? And you take on too much responsibility after a while and you need to go very factually. What can I own? What have I done? And, and really have an honest conversation with yourself. You don't need to go have it with your clients. You don't need to go have it with them, but what am I willing to take? And, you know, put that, that bubble around yourself. Negativity can't touch me. If your client's going to be upset at you, if you know, if you gave, if you had really good conscious communication, if you had constructive, compassionate consultations with them, if you let them know everything ahead of time, and then you're feeling like they're asking for something after the fact, then you know you've done your job. And I know a lot, it's me, says Burgundy. I love it. And so I needed to hear this today, Tracy. I love it. Oh, I love that you guys are loving this so much. And so I just want you guys to know that you can break up with a client and it doesn't need to be this big, horrific, horrible thing, right? You can let somebody go. It's totally okay. And you can do it in a way that isn't like you did this pointing the finger, pointing the finger never works. And it actually looks, it, it, it ends up not making you look great, right? Even regardless of who, if there's fault, whatever, right? But, but creating it in a way of taking responsibility for yourself, hey, Thank you so much for, you know, thank you for letting me know what you feel is fair. I'm happy to honor that. You know, thank you for, thank you for all the, the support you've given my business over the years. This is the email that I sent that client. Thank you for the support you've given my business over the years. It means so much to me moving forward. This is where our professional relationship will end. I wish you all the best and looking forward because here's the thing. When I broke up with that client, I didn't wish any ill will towards her. And that's like the one thing is like, are you acting out of anger? Are you acting out of emotion or are you getting into the facts? And it's really hard to separate the two because we're in, and I, and that's where I want to teach you guys not to react, but to respond. When we react, when we have that knee jerk reaction of like, da, 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 right. And we've all done it with clients. And then I, I don't know, tell, tell me you guys, this is, I know this has happened to me. So I want you guys to tell me if this has happened to you. You like, Hey, just so you know, I'm not going to redo your hair. Remember in our consultation when we said this, da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden you don't hear back from them right away or they respond and you're like too scared to open it up because you feel a little bit embarrassed about what you said. Right. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I totally just reacted. I know I've done that in the past for sure, right? We let the, our emotions take the best of us. So one thing that I teach inside of Rock Your Business, if you guys are in there already, is to go write out what you wish you could respond with and like look at it and get it all out because we need to honor our emotions. Our emotions are real, regardless of the intent of what is coming at us from our clients, how you feel. Like I said, when I got to the point where I would just hear my phone ding with a text, my body would have this stress response of like, oh, someone's mad at me. And that was an indication of like, my body is, it's gotten to the point of not just getting a negative text and reading it. It got to the point where like, okay, so then when my phone dings, that means there's a text that could be bad. And so my body started preemptively reacting to it where I like, I didn't even want to see my phone. It was like the connections got that far along and I had to reprogram and I don't want you guys to have to go through 
ending up in the hospital thinking you're dying, having a complete breakdown and having to rebuild everything from the ground up. It's not worth it. And so I want to stop that for you guys. So honor yourselves. Diana says, yes, even when I reread my text before hitting the send or waiting to respond, I feel sick. Yeah. And so go write it out somewhere else. And if you're needing to fire a client, like I said, I go deep into this inside of the Rock Your Business program. If you're not in there, if you're already in RYB, can you just put RYB in the comments? I'd love to see how many RYBers are here right now. And if you're curious about it, go to dombradley.com slash waitlist. You can get on the waitlist for RYB. Take a pause before responding. Yeah. Don't let your emotions react. I want you guys to logically respond. And so, like I said, when I had to fire that client, I said, thank you so much. I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair because I knew trying to run after her and get the money from her was not going to happen for the appointment she no-showed. Happy to honor what you feel is fair. Um, oh, look at all the RY beers. I love it. I love it, you guys. Amazing. And um, my heart was beating so burgundy. My heart was beating so fast when I heard the footsteps of one of my clients around the corner, time to let go. Yeah. And so it doesn't need to be a lot of times because we have that reaction. We go, oh, it's their fault, but it can just be like your stress response has gotten so far. And so you can compassionately let people go and have it so that you can be proud of how you dealt with it. If you can look back on an interaction and be really proud and go, oh, then you know that you dealt with it well. I know there's times in my past when I've been like, I did not handle that the way I do not. If that was broadcast on the nightly news, I would be embarrassed, right? But that email that I sent, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair. Thank you for your, can, your support over my business as it's grown over the years. I, I've appreciated it. Moving forward, this is where a professional relationship will end. I wish you all the best and I look forward to seeing you out and about. That way I knew that if she went and showed other people, like, can you believe Don fired me as a client? Or if it got put out there that I felt really good about it. I knew that likely would hurt her feelings because getting rejected never feels good, right? Getting rejected never feels good ever. And so know that when you have to do that to somebody else, do it with much kindness, compassion, and keep it factual. And I always say, like, take the emotion out of it, meaning any anger, like you did when when people start to be like, you did this, like, just want to remind you that you no showed your appointment. And you said that, like, I so for example, that client in 2016, I could have been like, you no showed your appointment. We talked on the phone. You said you'd pay the full fee, and now you're saying you're not. I mean, it doesn't read well for one, even if that is the facts. I don't need to remind the person of what's what, what they said they would do. And so I just kept it really factual. Now, once again, you guys kind of disagree with my stuff too. I want you to know that I'm sharing from a place that has removed the stress, anxiety, and panic out of my life and business. I don't want you to feel like I've done too many programs that were big, long to-do lists. So you guys know that I don't give you to-do lists. I don't give you step-by-step -step because what I want to give you is confidence to maneuver things. There's no one right way. I remember my dad giving me this customer service book from the 80s. And I was like, oh, this is probably really good. And I started reading it. And I was like, I could not disagree with this more. Doesn't mean it doesn't work for other people. But it was basically a book saying, like, if your best customer calls you at 5 p.m. on Christmas Day and wants to go into the store, you go. And I was like, um, respectfully disagree. For me to be at my best and give the best service to my clients in the salon, I know that I need to find methods and ways that have me showing up confident, having me not feeling defensive, not having to prove. And for me, that is educating my clients thoroughly, giving them. So anytime I post about how to let your clients know the price increase is coming, there's always a few comments where it's like, you don't, oh, you don't have to tell people your prices are going up. I'm like, correct. We don't have to. You absolutely do not have to tell people your prices are going up. However, if educating them on a price increase is coming is going to make you show up more confident, eliminate you emotionally discounting and having you feel more secure and confident in maneuvering through your business, then do it. I never want you guys to feel like I'm telling you what you have to do, because if it doesn't, I don't care what, how good these steps work for me, if it doesn't feel right for you. So that's why I approach business education very differently. I want you to feel proud, confident, secure and have a simple and easy method for yourself. Proud, confident, secure with a simple, easy method. How does that feel to you guys? And do you feel like you've taken something from this live this morning? Because I want you to feel confident knowing that there isn't one right way to do business. There was no playbook that I had in 2010 when I went out on my own. I had no idea what I was doing and I had no plan and I just jumped in. Hey, Emily, my good friend Emily just joined us who does business coaching, you guys. 
And so I want you to know that there's no one right way. You need to feel, com what did I just say? Comfortable, confident, secure with a simple and easy method. Anyone can give you a step-by-step -step to do, but if you don't feel comfortable, confident, and secure in it, you're not going to execute it well. That's why, how many of you guys have done other things in the past? You've, you've taken other programs and you've been like, yeah, I know what to do, but I can't seem to do it. And yet maybe this live in and of itself has given you some confidence to move through something of, okay, I need to let go of this client. Oh my gosh, Don just shared that template with me and there, there's only your way, right? And Don shared that template and it sounds so simple and easy. And I don't want you, here's the thing. A lot of times when we have ahas, they're not big giant, like, oh my gosh, change my world ahas. Usually the ahas are like, oh, oh shit. Oh my gosh. Why? That seems so simple because we're over complicators. Right. Like if you're like having to let a client go and like and if you guys heard me say the template earlier, like, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair. I want to I want to thank you for all the support you've given my business moving forward. This is where our relationship will end. This is where a professional relationship will end. I wish you all the best and looking forward to seeing you around. If hearing that you went, oh, my gosh, it's so simple. And it was like, oh, those are the ahas that they slowly go into place and you start to make your life and your business easier and simple and more profitable in the long run, right? Because if I would have spent time trying to chase after that client being like, you know, showed and you, you also verbally told me you would pay this fee, the time and energy that would have gone into trying to get that money, I could have made more money in my business spending that time doing something else. And so a lot of times I see like I refunded a client once for something just because I, I knew it was going to be a whole deal. And I was like, you know what, if this isn't worth it, it was uh, a relative of a relative who was not related to me. This is back in 2011. And I ended up, they, they wanted a full head of highlights or no, they, they couldn't afford a full head of highlights. So they only wanted a half. And then, so, you know, and I explained it all to them. Okay. This is what this means. And then they're like, Hey, like this half of my head isn't highlighted. And a lot of people in the comments of that post were like, you shouldn't have refunded her. And I was like, right, I could have not, but I also knew that this person was an irrational person. I had heard and seen past experiences. And so I didn't want to give them any ammunition against me. And so I ended up refunding them and then getting them. Cause I'm like, it's not worth the mental energy and the time because I need to be in a good space headspace. You need to, at evaluate the mental time and energy that you're burning. Are you guys with me? Overthinker and over explainer here, says Shiloh. Yeah. So I hope this has helped. I know I always have like a theme, like how to break up with a client and then we go off on tangents. Has this been helpful for you? Yes or no. And also if you've taken something from this, just pop in the comments, actually leaving comments neurologically, like the more you communicate, if you can, I know some of you guys are driving to work and whatever, but the more, if you're on the IG live right now, the more you actually type in stuff, the more it sets in your brain and the more likely you are to follow through. So if you took something, if something had clicked or there was an aha or something you're going to take away from this live, just pop it in the chat. I'm curious to know what's one of the things that was like a uh, aha moment or a realization or something that you want to adapt into your business. I'm curious because I want to know what has helped you this morning. I do these lives to help you guys grow your confidence become more secure and make things simple and easy. Um, and I just want to thank you guys. So I want to remind you quickly, if you're listening to this on the anxious creative podcast, or if you're here on IG with me, these do go over onto the anxious creative podcast, wherever you listen. So if you ever miss some of these, we're having a big sale on the merch right now, you can enter free shipping, uh, from now until the 31st and all stuff on the merch store at donbradley.com is, is free shipping. So you can get these. I'm a big deal. I can do hard things hoodies. We've got the mirror decals. We've got the stickers. Um, if you guys haven't seen them, go check them out. Dombradley.com. Just go to the store there. Enter free shipping, free shipping worldwide right now. You're, I've been loving seeing your orders come in. I know Burgundy, you're here right now and you put an order in and I'm so excited to get these into your hands. The mirror decals, I don't have them with me right now, but it says I'm a big deal and I can do hard things. There's also, you already are more than enough. So you could have one at home. You could have one at, the, at your, at your studio. Okay. Let's see what you guys got from this live. I always have great takeaways from you to stop, wait, and think before hitting send when communicating with a client that's unhappy or I need to release. Yes, Diane. Burgundy says, yes, this helps me realize that growth is slower sometimes in the small ahas instead of the giant leaps. Yes, Burgundy, yeah, take care of your health. A lot of times you guys have heard me say this before, and I'm going to remind you because we have to hear things over and over is that we oftentimes, a lot of us overcomplicators and overthinkers, we stand at the bottom of the staircase and we want to get to the top. Our goal is the top of the staircase metaphorically, right? And we go, okay, how can I get to that top of the staircase? And if you had a friend come over and you said, let's go upstairs. And they started trying to get up the staircase in one step, you'd be like, what, 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 what are you doing? 
right? Like what the heck? Nobody goes up a staircase in one step and yet taking one step seems too easy. But don't you, but you also crave ease and simplicity. But then we feel like we're cheating when it's easy. It's like this total mind thing that we do. It's like, I want it to be easy. I want it to be simple, but everything seems to be so hard for me always. Well, like I said yesterday, if you guys yes, yes, missed yesterday's live, the world isn't happening to you. It's responding to you. If you keep telling yourself and you keep reverberating to your brain, everything's always hard for me, then everything's always going to be hard for you, even though you crave simplicity. What if you started saying money comes easy to me? My clients are easy to deal with. I am confident in my business decisions. We want it to be easy and yet we won't allow ourselves to make it easy. One step at a time seems really insignificant. And I will tell you this, the people that hit that top of that staircase took in one insignificant step after the other and kept showing up. We take one step, we take two steps and we go, oh, I'm not at the top of the staircase yet. I mean, it should be harder. No, it actually doesn't need to be harder. You just need to have a habit and you need to be consistent. And you need to follow through with it. You need to admit that thing, what, the way you're doing things aren't working. You need to then commit to creating change in a habit. You need to then follow through and maintain it and make it easy. Really stop thinking it needs to be this like magic, like snap of the fingers. Boom, duh, I'm here. I will tell you this. And I've done this so many times over and over my business. I keep thinking, well, then I get to there and then it's smooth sailing, right? No, there's maintenance. And so you have to do the work to get to where you're going and then you have to maintain it. I don't want you guys to ever think that I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get to this place. And then it's like nothing but smooth sailing. It might be a lot easier. It might be a lot calmer waters, but you still have to show up. Baby steps. Yeah. Suggestion box, write some affirmations for us. Meaning like I write affirmations for you or I'm curious. I have a big deal sticker on my emotional support cups. I love that. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am getting some new merch coming in soon and RY beers for sure. You guys are going to be so freaking excited. Um, I need to push so I can implement my boundaries and policies so I'm not so resentful. Okay. Well, if you guys aren't already in rock your business, go to dombradley.com slash waitlist, get on the waitlist. Also, if you haven't taken my free workshop, go to dombradley.com slash free class. I have a, how to create financial stability uh, for non-numbers people. This is great, especially for those of you guys that connect with my education of keeping things simple, keeping it easy and going from the place of building confidence and security and simplicity. So if you haven't taken my free class yet, dombradley.com slash free class. If you are interested in having more education like this that goes deeper and connects and gives you more tools to work with, go to dombradley.com slash waitlist. I think I'm saying that right. I hope so. Can somebody double check that? I'm pretty sure that's the waitlist page for RYB. We're going to be opening up enrollment for it again soon. Desert Rainbug says, you are just so good with words and help me know what to say. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That really, really makes me happy. Well, you guys are amazing. I have two retreats coming up soon here in my home. You can come hang out in my living room here in Calgary, Alberta. If you're interested in coming to a retreat, go to dombradley.com slash retreat. I know I'm throwing a lot of links at you guys today. Um, but I just want you guys to know that I would love if, if you connect with my education, if this has helped you, if this doesn't help you, then I'm probably not the right person for you right? And that's okay. I'm not made, I'm not the educator for everyone. But if you want to become more confident and secure, less reactive and more responsive, if you want to be able to build trust, respect, loyalty, and authority with your clients and become the business owner, you probably thought you never could be, but you secretly want to be, but you're scared that you're not enough to be. I have this weird ability to be able to help people believe in themselves and move forward. And so I'd love to invite you into my home here in Calgary, Alberta. Just go to dombrella.com slash retreat. Go check out what it is. Just book my flights, Kelly said. Woo -woo, I love it. And Ash, I can't wait for the retreat. I can't wait for you guys to be in my living room with me. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited. All right, you guys, I wish I could just hang out here chatting all day. I'm going to go be a responsible business owner and do some of the stuff that I actually like don't love doing, but it's going to be that it, it's not hard. It's just taking that one step. And sometimes I'm like, oh, this doesn't seem like it's hard enough or it's not fun enough, but I know that it's going to help. So I hope you guys have an awesome day. Remember I go live weekday mornings between eight and eight 30 here on Instagram. If you missed any of these lives, go over to the anxious creative podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts and Lee, you guys know what I would love. I love, Oh, thanks. I love your home decor. Kate, okay, Diane, can I tell you a true story this morning? So I have this whole setup. I should take a picture and put on my story so you guys can see behind the scenes. I have a softbox light. I have my phone. I have my DSLR camera. I have my laptop. I have this little like rolly desk because I love the background and I love my home, but I was like, 
this morning. I was like, is it worth like setting this all up every day in the living room? I should probably just make it set up in like the spare room, have a, have a set that's set up. So I don't need to like come spend 15, 20 minutes setting it up and then taking it down 15, 20 minutes, 20 minutes every day. But then I was, and then I was like, nobody cares what the background of my living room looks like. But then you said that now I'm like, maybe I should. <laughs> um, I do love my home, but maybe I might change the location of these just to make it more simple and less overcomplicated. Oh, damn. I just used my own education on me, you guys. Right? I always tell you guys, nobody comes to you. I remember one of my students was like, I'll raise my prices when I color the walls of my salon white. And I was like, nobody cares about the color of your salon. And I need to listen to that myself too this morning. No, I love it. Okay, you want me to stay in the living room? Is it worth the extra like hour of time each day setting it up and taking it down? I don't know if it is. Maybe what I should do, this is like legit a thought I had. I'll take a picture and I'll blow it up and I'll make it the backdrop. <laughs> I love it too. Um, what I love your living room back. You guys, you all do love my living room background. Well, maybe I do need to keep it here. Okay, now you're having me rethink it. Okay, I love this. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, I won't maybe. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are really making me rethink this. Um, yes, no, but redecorate the office to match. There we go. We'll make, we'll make the office cute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's worth it. I love it. Okay. It's perfect. Okay. You know what? I got to listen to the people. Um, you guys are amazing. Have a wonderful day. If we haven't connected in the DMS yet, if you haven't got to, if we haven't got to connect, please shoot me a DM. And like I said, the, the number one thing you can do, if you get something out of this, I love the background too. It matches the vibe. Okay. 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 <laughs> we'll keep it here. Um, if you guys got something out of this live, the best thing and the best way you can say thank you and the thing that helps me is to go leave a review on the Anxious Creative Podcast or share this live. I post these, um, you know, within the next five minutes after we're done, I post these on Instagram, share it in your stories, tag me. That's the best way that we can spread the word because I'm on a mission and it's this mission I can't do alone. And it actually scares me a little bit, but I don't know if you guys can hear Lewis drinking his water right now. That's okay. That's part of life. Um, it scares me. Hi, buddy. Are you coming in? There you go. Hi. Mwah. Um, sorry, Shiloh, if you're here and your Louie hears it, but I want you first time catching your live because of the time difference. I love your posts. Oh, thank you, Jillian. Where can I listen to your podcast? So you can look the anxious creative podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, it doesn't even look like me anymore because I have dark hair in the picture, but I'm getting new pictures with a very cool photographer very soon. I can't wait to tell you guys all the details. Um, what was I saying before that though? I forget. Does anyone remember? I was going off on, on a tangent. Oh, the best way that you can say thank you for these is share these lives on Instagram in your stories or share them with anyone who might like them. Leave a review. Honestly, those things go a long way. So if you guys have two to three minutes, maybe even one minute to go do one of those things, that would mean the world to me. That would be the biggest thank you. And that helps me spread the word and link arm in arm. Like I said, I'm on this mission. That's what I was saying. I'm on a mission to link arm in arm. I can't do this alone. If we want to start having the world treat us and respect us like the professionals we are, we have to start together by showing up together in a collaborative, um, collaborative community that isn't catty or competitive, but is celebratory. And you guys do that. And I'm so thankful. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with me, for believing in yourself, for willing to get uncomfortable. It means the world to me. And you guys are the reason that I show up every morning in my bed head. Look at this. It's pretty, pretty hot right now. No makeup because you accept me as I am. I want you to know I accept you where you're at, wherever you're at. You're amazing. You have everything you need already to be hugely successful. Sometimes all that you need is some encouragement, support, and motivation. So have a wonderful day. We'll see you here. Is it Thursday today? I don't even know. The weeks go by so fast. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same time, same place. I love you back, Diane. And we'll talk to you soon. Until then, you guys, stay weird. Bye. And you guys, I say bye to you last. Thank you guys, Shiloh, Tracy, Hope for Humanity, Penny, uh, and Facebook user. I don't know who that is. Thank you guys for being here on these lives. I love it. I hope that I chat with you guys just as much over here. So have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.